Welcome to Oversharing with the Overbees. I'm Joe. And I'm Matt. And each week you can tune in to hear us respond to your voicemails, go in depth on our lives as content creators, and hopefully leave you feeling even better than we found you. With that being said, let's get to Oversharing. My body hurts so badly. When are you going to get used to working My, <laughs> no, like I have hurt. Don't get me wrong. Like mm-hmm. I have hurt and I complain and I have lots to say, but today is a different level. It was like me like two weeks ago. Yes. Yeah, that was brutal. Yeah. Like during my workout, I was doing my very first two moves. And as I was doing them, I already could feel the pain that was going to be the next 48 hours. Okay. Like that's not ideal. No, it's not good. And I told her, I was like, I don't think I can do this. And she said, you, you can do it. You actually can do it. And you're going to do it for the next hour. Well, no, I didn't mean that I couldn't do the whole workout. Like the move that I was doing, mm-hmm. I was like, I, I don't think I can do any more of these. Handstand push-ups? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, correct. Um, I've actually gotten really good at those the last couple of months. They really, they tear up those triceps though. No, I was Shoulders, doing Bulgarian sure. split squats. Ah, a classic. And holy cannoli. Then we did these things where I was in a plank Mm -hmm. but then you like rock back into your feet and bend your knees, your hands stay, and then you go back out. And that was one of the easiest looking, like when I watched it, I wasn't like, oh, this is going to be easy. But as I was watching, I was like, oh, this is one of those that like, I feel bad with how hard it is because it looks so Mm -hmm. effortless. I mean, it absolutely just annihilated my You're not going to do it in front of people and like blow their minds. No. You're going to be like, oh, okay, I got it. And then- and then it's they, really they hard. Well, I think it was it. especially hard after doing split squats. That checks out. Yeah. Anyway, I really, like, I hurt really bad. Just not even hurt. It's that, like, your muscles feel excessively tired. Yeah. I feel that feeling all over right now. Okay. That's good. You should probably take a bath tonight. That's yeah. what <laughs> saved my life two weeks ago. I mean, it's not. I've been trying to drink a lot of water because I'm important. like, oh no, oh no. Yeah. I did that for one day and then I got very dehydrated the next day and then I was in a lot of pain. Yeah. And then finally I recovered. But yeah. Um, what's I did not your... work out today. I reorganized my phone home screen and uh, it's not good. Oh. Uh, it's now like using someone else's phone. Um, but I will you... take any tips on reorganizing your phone. Do you like the way it, what? okay, I guess give me more input. Why did you do this then? Um, I'm trying to be more organized. Okay. I'm trying to structure my life more. Okay, love it. I literally got an app called Structured. This is not sponsored. I don't even know if it's any good yet, but I did subscribe for a year, so I hope it is. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I went for it. It was like $3 for a month or $10 for a year. Oh, okay. And I was like, okay, you I can had... you can swing the ten dollars, and it's really a bold like you're gonna forget about the three dollars, and you're gonna pay thirty six dollars. I your subscribed first year. to something for the year. Yes, this, yesterday. Oh, I know. Okay. I haven't done this one. I finally canceled my Fabletics. Oh, that's big. Yeah, I skipped this month. I have a credit like that I didn't use from a few months ago mm. that I need to use, and then I went ahead and canceled it. Okay. Because I've had Fablet. How long have I had Fabletics? A decade. <laughs> it's not that long, no. but a long time. But I skip a lot of months. Yeah, but you forget to skip some. And but every once in a you. while, I'll forget to skip a month. And it's gotten expensive. I think when I started on their subscription, I think it was $30 a month. Uh-huh. That was like, I don't know, six years ago. And I think now it's like 50 or $60 a month. Yeah. Anyway, I finally canceled that. If Rocket Money wants to sponsor this podcast, I think they just talk about like canceling subscriptions you don't use. Uh, <sighs> go ahead and... Yeah, hit us up because we clearly don't do that. Yeah, I'm like that would we be. We are the exact people you want subscribing to your service. But uh, can I get to what I did? No. Okay. Okay, go for it. I subscribed. I went over to one of our neighbors' house for a little happy hour the other night, and I got to her house, and she has these floor to ceiling bookshelves in their uh, living room, and all the books were the exact same size, and they had this little emblem on them, and I was like why are these books that I've read, but they don't look like the ones that I've seen? And she said, oh, it's book of the month. Mm. And I said, ma'am, ma'am, what do you mean? It's book of the month. And she said, you've never heard of book of the month. Uh, And then very kindly explained to me, there's this service where they curate, like 
you each month they like put six new releases out that you can get a hardback copy of for your subscription cost. So I think I, I went ahead and paid for the whole year up front. And so I think that made it $14 a month. Okay. And you get a hardback copy of a new book each month and you get to pick like they curate six oh, each okay. month that's cool and then you get to pick which one you want and they're like thrillers romance um whatever fantasy etc cetera, etc cetera. i was like that's kind of a good deal on 12 random hardcover books but if you get to pick that's different no you get to pick yeah, yeah yeah and okay. you can skip months like if there's sure. not a book that interests you you can skip and you can also like i think you can add even if you don't want one of the books from that month I'm not like, and you can do audiobooks. Like there are options, but I thought it was a killer deal. Yeah. Because hardback books are expensive. Yeah, books they are. in general are expensive now. Paper man. Like I feel like I used to get a book for like eight or nine dollars, and now it's like a minimum, like a fifteen dollar book's a good deal. Generally, you're in the twenty to thirty dollar range. Sure. That's a lot. Do we have any more free ads? Oh, okay. No, I was just kidding. No. <laughs> Do you just want me to stop talking? Matt Matt has a direction he's wanting to go, and it's no. not you guys telling me about the exciting Hold thing on. that I ordered. Hold on. This is an open forum. This is a podcast for both of us. What are you <sighs> looking at? You're I was staring just, off into space. I was looking at my books and how they're not all the same size and how excited I am to get a book every month. Like, she had okay. hundreds of them because she's been doing it for, like, I don't know. She said eight or nine years. Got it. I was going to say, um, most books aren't going to be the same size, so it's kind of... I don't mean the same width. I mean that they're all the exact same dimension. But they're the same height, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the part like that you see from the bookshelf. Right. Sure. Well, you also see the width, I guess, from the bookshelf if it's like fat or skinny. Sure. I don't know that anyone complains that much about that, do they? I don't. I don't think so. It's like a weird I don't think people probably complain about... I don't know. People complain about anything. That's true. So, I mean, let's... uh, Anyway, you go ahead. You put us back on the track you want to be on. Oh, my goodness. Okay. I outlined one episode for the first time in like six months, and now I'm just getting harassed for it. Wait, no. You're not. You're being being celebrated for it. Celebrated? This is how you celebrate people? I'm not upset. Oh, okay. No. I, Caroline and I, if you want to go listen to Middle Ground, the episode (laughs) of, well, I guess it won't come out till it'll come out on Monday. I don't know. Anyway, maybe it won't come out for another week. They're every other week. It's now. coming out after this one. So yeah, it's coming out works. after this episode. But when her and I filmed today, we talked about how the best thing you can do is assume people mean the best, which yeah. is the opposite of what Matt does. Matt yeah. just nope. assumes I am always insulting him. <laughs> yep, my internalized dialogue is like, <sighs> "You, they're doing this to hurt you." It's not good. Not that I have an internal dialogue, but I just react to everything as though it's meant passive aggressively. Everything. Yeah. It's not good. Again, therapy. It's I'm working <laughs> on it. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, we've been TikTok dancing still. We have. Like we have another one on the like the itinerary. Yeah, we so do. That's cool. I think we're gonna start doing that weekly and then I kinda Matt and I have been really mapping out content to take everything a little more seriously now that the like kids it's a job. Well, no, it's just like now that the kids are a little bit older, I feel like we have a little bit more gas in the tank to get back to work. And we've had the privilege of kind of rotting a little bit while the kids have been (laughs) like, I don't know, little kids are a lot. And And they, yeah, as much as people like really drill schedule, it takes a lot to run a schedule, especially when you work from home. For sure. They don't understand work from home. They're like, hey, dad, you're at the house let's let's play and you're like push me on the swing i'm trying to work and they're like yeah but you're home so your life should really be about me i can't really conceptualize work but i can conceptualize you pushing me on the swing yeah big time yeah and so i feel like we've been really trying to kind of get some structure back and one of those things that we decided matt and i like spent a whole day and we went back through all of our old content of like when we initially kind of grew on TikTok and mm-hmm. we used to have a much like bigger engagement. We were growing a lot more rapidly and we looked back and we were like, what were we doing then that we're not doing now? And it turns out that we were just like fun. Yeah. We were like happy and carefree. And I don't know that we're not like, I still feel like we have those qualities, but we have been so wrapped yeah. up in some, some heavy stuff the last couple of years, sure. just life uh, and having kids and evolving. And so 
Anyway, we're going to dance once a week because we always have a lot of fun doing that personally. And yeah. I feel like people enjoy <laughs> watching us struggle. And it takes us like an hour and a half to learn them. So it's good for fitness as well. Yes. So, you know, that's always a plus. I'm also bringing back the posing guides. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. I asked for... It's 2020 again, people. I asked for recommendations or like um, requests for what people wanted to see posing guides for on my story this weekend. And I got a lot of responses and so i'm gonna get started on filming those um leading into uh spring break time and all of that sure so kind of fun yeah. so those will both be coming weekly outfit of the day is still happening if there's anything that you guys ever think of that you would like to see as a series joe learns to host uh will still be going on i have g's birthday this summer and i have a couple baby showers that i'm going to be planning for that i'll be doing videos for that um, but yeah, if there's any series you guys want to see, we really like to yeah. hear about that. You're slowly acquiring art for your, your wall here in the room. I am. I'm building a piece of art for it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I tore apart an old hard drive that died that we lost a bunch of data from, uh, which was sad and unrecoverable. Sent it off to like specialists and they're like, yeah, man, no, this is I like lost dead, dead. G's entire first year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thankfully, I had copies of quite a bit of it, but there were some things that I, I'll yeah. never get back. So that was a bummer. That is sad. Anyway, I took that hard drive apart and turned it into a piece of art. Yeah. Question no, mark? No, no question mark, yeah. period. I turned it into a piece of art, period. 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 On God. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> what? Okay. I just had to fire it out there, see yeah. what happens. Um, no, yeah. So making a hard drive framed piece of art, maybe even videoing it. So you might even be able to see how it happened. That's, you know, let's not promise anything too, too heavy, you know, like actually making actual expectations of Matt. Yeah. Don't have those. Yeah. Let's not do that. Um, crumble under pressure. So you reading anything interesting? Watching. Am I reading anything interesting? I just finished them. Well, I didn't finish. I decided to skip out on the last three books of it. I have been reading a mafia romance series and I think I got to the end of like what I want to read because I started reading the next one and the character that it's about really doesn't interest me. And so I looked up the two after it to see like who they were about to see if that interests me. And the reviews really went downhill after the first five. So I'm not even going to go there. No, first six. I read the first six. Uh, so many. I know it really is. And they went very quickly. Like I was reading one a day and then I didn't, I got to the seventh one and I didn't read at all yesterday because I wasn't that interested in picking it up. And then I have been picking up a lot of books that are available on Spotify uh, premium to listen to as audiobooks mm -hmm. on Kindle Unlimited because then I can listen like when I'm driving or when I'm doing chores around the house or whatever. And then I can swap back to reading without paying extra money to do that wow and so anyway i was like well maybe i'll get into it and i listened to like the first two chapters and i was like no nope, i'm done with that series i am dnfing that and we are moving on so i think i'm gonna hit mistborn uh, okay. which i've been circling my way back around to doing mistborn for a while because i did crescent city 3 which is a big fantasy world and i could never do back-to-back -back fantasy because i get the magic systems conflated yeah. You watched like an hour and a half of television last night on your own. I did not watch that much. Well, okay. You turned it on while you were doing something on your no, phone. No, I, I turned it on. And then the whole time you were at the grocery store, I paused it and <laughs> I <laughs> I watched a live. And then when you got back, no, just before you got back, I had resumed. I watched one episode. Okay. I was like, so you watched like 25 minutes of television. I'm really disappointed because it's not done very well. You're watching the Avatar yeah on netflix series yeah. have you seen anything about it no no okay that's not really my world well i, never I need to look up i'm it. curious what people are saying about it because i was watching and i don't even dislike the casting that they did but i just felt like it wasn't done super well it can't be great if you're the one critiquing production value i know because you are not that person no i'm not you're not like that's not very good CGI. But last night you were like, this CGI is bad. Yeah. Which well, means it, just it has to be me jarring. It's such a popular, 
like it is such a popular nostalgic show and i think making a like a live action version animated. of it yeah could I think of it a live action of an animated show right yeah. is like it could be so good mm-hmm. but i don't know anyway it's tricky too to do it in real life like cartoon stuff if they can do the witcher they can do avatar that's true like that's kind of my point do you think that costs like a bajillion dollars to make i know but this didn't need to it doesn't have as many effects as like they're in the ocean not okay okay i don't know like the effects i was talking about that were so bad anyway (laughs) i yeah i was a little disappointed i may go back and watch it if i look up online and people are saying good things but even the acting like i don't know just wasn't you weren't sold no, and I'm not, I am not a critic. No. I am you're, uh... not a critic. And so if something, like, same thing with books. I'm like, if I say it's bad, it's bad. Yeah. Like. <laughs> it's true. Anyway. It's just true. Yeah. Yeah. I started watching True Detective that started, like, eight weeks ago. Okay. It's good. Cool. Yeah. Season four. They're always, like, suspense, scary. We watched the one that was filmed in Northwest Arkansas. Oh, yeah. We did. I forgot you watched that. Yeah. I feel like it's not your show. I don't... Again, don't I, I don't know how shows, many times but... I can say this. I sound so pretentious, and I really don't mean it that way. I just don't like watching TV that much. Yeah. Yeah. You're better than TV. <sighs> God. Yeah. Matt. I hear you. You know Crystal that's clear. not what Crystal I mean. Crystal clear. Got it. I don't know why I don't... It's just never been my thing. Yeah. Short form video. It's corrupted your brain. You your think? Your attention span is so short now for video that it has to be 15 seconds or less. I don't even feel like I like short. <laughs> like, I don't. I just. No. It's true. It's true. I like to be outside. Reading a book. I like to touch my plants. <laughs> While reading a book. Yeah. 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 All that. Bad dad, me mom. You have any mean mom moments from the week? Oh, I should have thought about this prior. Do you have a good one? Uh, I mean, I don't know if it's a good one, but I have had... uh, I've not been co-regulating or self-regulating great this last week. So... Oh, I have. um, Yeah. Yeah, our two and a half year old and I have been emotionally struggling together. Yeah, you guys are about the same level. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. We can learn on... Uh, you know, either becoming an inner child or healing our inner child depends on who you're talking about. So, uh, yeah, I just have not have not been crushing it when the the tantrums and the meltdowns happen. It's been uh, hard to de-escalate and not elevate, which is kind of important because they they aren't intentionally doing much. I mean, anytime they melt down, it's like hey, I need something that I don't have or that I would like to have. It's not like, I'm going to ruin your day. Watch yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that I have anything crazy. I was thinking of uh, the way that ours vaccine schedule landed. It made mm. it to where he had to have <laughs> six shots at one doctor's appointment, and I felt a little bad about that. But that... I don't know that that's necessarily mean, Mom. He's handling six shots like a champ, though. Yeah, he did really he got, well. Yeah, he straight up got six shots last time. Yeah. And he's been pretty good. Yeah. The time or two that G had, I, I mean, I think four is the most she ever got. But the few times that she did that, she had some rough she weeks. Was, yeah. She wanted to snuggle for a week. Yeah. Which you loved. I loved it, yeah. You were like, actually... I dropped everything and just snuggled All for a week. Vaccines, and please. I don't regret. <laughs> <laughs> I would like them to always just snuggle with me. Ahead. No. Yeah. Double vax can never be too safe. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So I don't have anything other than that. Yeah. So we're, we're resettling this week. Hopefully, hopefully dad can get his uh, anxiety back on the tracks and uh, stop matching his, t- you know, his toddler's energy when she melts down you don't match her energy no. it's not like she like is like ah, and you're like ah. yeah that would be <laughs> terrible yeah i'm not doing that and you did a really good job yesterday they were both melting down yesterday 
you were uh, internally. She was externally. Yes. And Matt said, Joe? And I said, yeah. He's like, I think we need to switch places. <laughs> yep. We've had a few of those. There's been a couple. Bedtime has been brutal. There's been a few nights where we've had two hour bedtimes. And that's not good for me. No. Yeah. After about an hour, I'm like, hey, this is this is hurting me now. Like, <laughs> this has been really delightful for 30 minutes. And then 30 minutes of like, this isn't great, but we'll get through it. And then after an hour, I'm like, I'm not enjoying this anymore. And you really need to go to sleep because it's wildly late. So, yeah. You know, room for improvement. Always, always room do for better. improvement. But do we, are we going to Reads of the Week? We could do Reads of or the Week, sure. A, I like... I don't know what your order is. Go ahead. You yeah. you take me down the correct path. I like path. to outline an episode and then she doesn't look at it at all. She just, she rolls off the dumb. Yeah. That's your, that's your forte. I'm really good at roll. Like, I don't yeah. have to. I'm happy to make an outline. But sure. that is something I've realized with you and Caroline is you guys both want to roll off the dome. Yeah, well, yeah. It's A more little like bit. I would like to not have to outline things. Yeah. But I I do it I do better when I do hundred percent so it makes sense yeah yeah just not even like I'm not reading it verbatim it's more like hey here's some things you could talk about this week do you think this is what most podcasts big podcasts have like producers for their producer like uh yeah like they yeah. have people who like do research and like put things yeah definitely okay I think they that way like if they're wondering. talking about a story everybody's on the same page uh-huh. if they're talking about stuff yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think that's usually what people do, but that you makes know, sense. That's not our style here. Yeah, we okay. just let her rip. You know, fifty percent of the time. For sure, for sure. So, anyway, we can do. Yeah, we can do. Uh, Greg's reads of the week. I went ahead. Did and, you? Oh, you pulled them. Yeah, I pulled fabulous. Them. Okay. Pulled them for you. I love that. I'm doing your whole job this week. I love it. Okay, it's not really your job. You still have the voicemails, so we'll see if we got any. Greg's reads of the week. Greg is your dad. Yes, he sends us a lot of articles. We love him. Um, we love sometimes, him. We love articles. Yeah. Sometimes the titles give you anxiety. Um, I had a big epiphany this week when talking to my dad on the phone about this. Okay. Because he was saying that he's like, well, I read a lot of really bad articles. And so I always try to send you guys the good ones so that you don't have to sift through articles. And I realized that is a big generational difference because I don't read news. No. I get everything on TikTok sure. or Instagram unless it's like a major headline. If it's like a major headline that I need to fact check and that I need like a very reliable, safe source, I will do the research into like obtaining that from sure. a news source. Yeah. The news is scary. And that's why we read Greg's Reads of the Week. <laughs> so first article headline, show this chart to anyone who tells you college isn't worth it. I did not look at the chart. I, I don't even know that I saw that one. It's recent. Oh, okay. Is that like today? I don't know. Okay. I didn't get that one or I didn't like look at it. But you have it, but. Right. I just mean I didn't see it with so, my eyes. Uh, one to zero five. Zero out of five. Okay. Zero anxiety. Also did not give me anxiety. We both went to college. Like we both had the privilege of going to college. Yes. So, but I also am on a big uh, causation and correlation are not the same and i feel like that could definitely be that chart yeah yeah because i was i watched a tiktok today that was talking about how people for a long time it's been debunked now thought that red wine was healthy because people who drank a glass of red wine a day tended to live longer or whatever but really the correlation was that most people that drink red wine were higher income and had Ah, better better medical care gotcha not it had nothing to do with the red wine sure and Ah, i just looked at the article Mm -hmm. um it's just that the wage gap is higher pretty significantly for college educated bachelor's degree versus high school diplomas so but i don't think that that i I don't know that that has to do with college education as much as we would like to say. Yeah, it tends to be just kind of this barrier that people arbitrarily set up in terms of like... Well, I also think it has a lot to do with networking and connections, which people say you make through college, but I don't... I think college is an opportunity to do that, but I don't think it's the only way to do that. Yeah. And I think those are the tools that we don't give people. Yeah. 
Hot take. Anyway, next one. $1.1 trillion spent on green energy matching the spend on fossil fuels for the first time in history. That's from the Good News Hub. So, mm, Like a two out of five. Two out of five? Yeah. Okay. I was going to go one out of five, like it didn't cause me any, but now I'm realizing that that still means we spend a lot on the Yeah, other. it gives me a little bit, like it, it's hopeful, it's good news, but it's also just like this, oh yeah, we have to fix the the environment the environment yeah <laughs> and that i whole thing. i never feel like i'm doing enough in that regard yeah yeah i mean it's tough to directly impact as like a single individual right but, but also it's the entire world's made up of single individuals so if we come together and as individuals do something anyway and corporations are people so right that's okay also as people and important. our next one is and our last article architects are turning the to cannabis-based hempcrete that could revolutionize the way we build our homes. Zero out of five, but I am fascinated. Yeah. I mean, you're a big hemp user now, so <laughs> that's your your latest passion project. Passion project? No, not really. Do you feel like that's just all I'm talking about? Yeah. You just can't stop talking about CBD gummies and how they help you sleep. <laughs> Should we run another free ad? <laughs> No. <laughs> I feel like I've barely talked about it. No. And haven't. I feel like you are just like fixated like, on it. I like making it a thing that's not real. Is it because you've never seen me like take something consistently? That's true. Yeah. That you're just but, like, I mean, wow, I think you must be obsessed with this. I think that's a testament to making medication into gummies and how effective that is for you personally. Yeah, for sure. Like if you needed to take a medication daily... I should really just find a way to make any pill into fruit snacks. Do you know what snacks. I need? That's what? what I was just thinking. Is the like fruit snackitizer. I I literally just need like a literal like Welch's fruit snacks, but it has all the different <laughs> kinds of vitamins I need in it. Yeah. And I just wake up and I eat that with my bottle of water. It's a whole package. Yeah. It's yeah. You're thinking of like care of where they send you like six vitamins. Yeah. But it's only gummies. It's, yes. It's like twelve gummies in a bag. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. I mean, I do think there's a risk with kids. Um, That's probably why. Having an why, entirely huh? gummy packaged vitamin slash medication delivery system, but it would work. It would work. It would work really well for me. I don't mind taking, like I can swallow a pill fine. Sure. But I'm just a lot less likely to do it. But if we want you to remember, fruit yeah. snack it. Fruit snack it for sure. Yeah. If anyone has a way to fruit snack medications, let me know. <laughs> I'm like a dog that you have to hide it in peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we could do that too, but I feel like you're going to bite it. And I feel like it's going to be really gross if you do that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. Oh, so we had, uh, what was interesting was we had an email this week and um, I think it was a little bit older, but they were asking about college and uh, they were just starting college and wanted to know if we had any uh, tips, tricks, or stories from our college days. And seeing as I'm sneaking up on a decade since I graduated college, um, figure we would we would hit some uh, some college highlights. Yeah, some war stories from college. Do you want to start? Uh, sure, sure. Um, and I've touched on it before, but uh, high school built a lot of bad study habits for me, and so this is going to fall more into the advice column than necessarily a story because the story is in high school I didn't do a lot outside of the in-class work and made it through high school just fine. College, that wasn't such a good idea. And so it took me two or three semesters to land on academic probation. And since I was on academic scholarship, it was like, oh, okay, well, if you do this again, then you're not going to have a scholarship anymore. So maybe you need to figure out how to actually pass your class as well. So uh, it turns out if you do the homework, and uh, read the textbook when they tell you to read the textbook and study your performance is drastically improved crazy as opposed to just going to class may or may not pay attention go home see if you can pass tests and homework and you can't so anyway recommend studying building some study habits building routines around that if that's not your uh something you do already. Some people were great about it already. They did well. Also, I decided to skip 
a couple classes that I could have just retaken in college and gotten like good grades in fairly easily. So unless it's going to cut like years off of your, your college. Um, Sometimes it's good to retake those classes yeah. to practice the, especially yeah. like the difference at that. the college level. Um, yeah. It's, it's not a bad thing to get an easier a or two if you have a background in that class, especially since like I was on academic scholarship, so I could take the hours. Like it wasn't a cost difference to me. I had, I could take however many hours a semester. And so should have not skipped several classes that I did because taking the level two class at college was significantly harder than taking. Well, not that the level two was even available in high school, but it would have been good to start with one. I started in French five. Yes. Uh, when I came into college and that was my first semester and that was like my biggest mistake of my entire life. I remember Even, you crying in the hallway of the business building. Yeah. Because you had to go to French next. Yeah. <laughs> Even my teacher said that it would have been easier if I would have started at French six or I think it was six because the whatever level five class it was, that was the one they used to kind of weed out people who wanted to major or minor in French. Ah um moving up and so it was just like it was a very demanding class and mm-hmm. language was always really hard for me but i had taken french for uh four years six years six years okay since i was 12 yeah you could you so, were like pretty decent at french yes uh i'm not do not speak to me in french now i got no, nothing no but that's not true i can say i don't know i don't speak french <laughs> je ne sais pas je ne parle pas français that's all yeah. i got anymore um it but, sounded good when you were speaking french back in the day yeah well yeah anyway not important so i then started and that kicked my ever loving behind yeah i was just trying to get my language like credit over with and i could have started in like french <laughs> like one you know what i mean like yeah you could have just could have you could have smashed like the first four classes I in French. I think I thought maybe that, because I think I only needed the one class above this one to get a French minor or something like yeah, that. I, I don't think remember that's what, what it was. It was. You could have gotten, something... I think you could have gotten a minor in French with just like one or two classes. There was, And I'm probably saying this wrong, but it was something along those lines. And so, but I took that one and it, I barely passed. <laughs> you passed because I think that the teacher the felt teacher bad teacher felt for you. so bad for me. I was coming to her uh, office hours. Office and... hours. I mean, I was doing everything I could and I just... You were doing the exact opposite of what I was doing well, in and... my classes, which was just silently getting C's, D's, and F's. Even though I'd had a hard time in French, like all the years that I took it, yeah, I had put in so many years to it, I was like... Just languages do not come naturally to me. It's very hard for me. Yeah. It always has been. I like I've really desperately wanted to be bilingual and I have done a lot of like since I was a kid, I was because yeah. well, and one of my very best friends had the privilege of from the time she was very little being exposed to Spanish. And then in sixth, seventh, eighth grade, she went to Spanish summer camp where they only spoke Spanish. So she was fluent in Spanish when we were in middle school. And that friend is now fluent in, or has been, whether fluent now or has been fluent in the time I've known her, she's been fluent in Spanish, English, Swahili, Arabic. That might be it. I feel like I'm missing one. But anyway, um, a lot of languages. And I always thought that was so, I admired that so much. And... (laughs) Guys, I'm smart, but I'm not that smart. <laughs> like I said, I remember you crying about French. Yeah, it was the worst class experience I ever had. And I was not a good student, but I worked really hard in that class and I got a C. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was my only C all of college. That's funny. The only one. I had A's and B's the rest of college, but I did have that one C on my report card. I feel like you didn't love your art classes either. I didn't like my art professor oh. because my art professor, it was somebody I, I cause I was going to double major. <laughs> this is so <laughs> man, you're really taking me back. I was going to double major and, uh, art and business, art and business. And I was in a figure drawing class my first year. And the professor was an artist. Like, you know how you think of that, like very art personality mm-hmm. and, uh, she really connected really well with a lot of the students in the class, but obviously like 
was not interested in me. Didn't dislike, like was very neutral. It wasn't like a negative, just like I could see that she really loved other students in her class and she like didn't give me the time of day, which was fine. So that automatically, like I'm such a like affirmation and I need people to like me. So that already put me on edge. And then I remember to this day, I'll never forget it. We were in the class and she was talking about how her faith journey impacted this piece that she was talking to us about and blah, 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 blah. And I asked the question, I said, well, can you tell us like, what, what is your faith journey? Like why in this piece? And she went absolutely boiling and screamed at me in front of everybody in the class saying that was an incredibly inappropriate question. You never ask people that you never, this, you never that. Like I was (laughs) mortified. That's, that's crazy. Like, she brought it up. No, a hundred percent. And I, I like, I don't think I've ever told this story to anybody because I walked out of that class and I was so mortified. I have never talked about it again. Yeah, I do I, remember you just kind of dropped art at one point. I did, well, it made me cry. I left yeah. and I like cried because I was so embarrassed and I was so, and like, I wasn't even saying, like, I was just like, what I wanted to know more about, like, <laughs> what anyway, like. You asked a follow up question to her uh, right. description. I'll Ouch. never forget it. And then she was really not into me. After I asked that, she was <laughs> really not into me the rest of the uh, semester. And then I ended up dropping art. Not because there were other classes that yeah. I liked in the art program, but I realized that everything was a lot more medium art than it was going to be anything photography-wise. And I didn't feel like the photography program was going to provide very much benefit to me in what I was wanting to do. Yeah. Yeah. You always... I think you get classified as a creative a lot and that's really not your forte no i'm not i would love to be a creative i really admire creatives and i really love listening to them talk and how passionate they are about their mediums and about like the representation that their work has and all that kind of stuff like i really do i admire it i love it it's not me yeah you're a people person I'm so a people you've worked person. in creative fields but you're much more um interested in talking with people working with people and business yeah for which is sure. why you get your business degree and not your art degree yeah i wasn't a good business student either though <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna tell you guys right now just college in general i was not a good student i wasn't a like i was a yeah i went to class and i was respectful and nice but i just didn't i don't know i i think my dad didn't go to college And while education and attending and getting to know people was very much prioritized and taught to me, like, to be important to me, grades were never, like, it didn't matter if I got an A or a C ever. To you or? To to anybody in my, I don't remember. Well, granted, let me rephrase that. I got almost all A's in high school. Sure. And so it probably didn't, I didn't think of it as mattering i didn't get all a's because i was being told i needed to have i did not get straight a's i was like a 70 percent a 30 percent b student and i uh i don't know it was just never that like valued it was more like well it wasn't even try your best i wasn't even (laughs) taught to like work my hardest I, I just get that get, get it done no like <laughs> literally i think that's what i was taught get uh, in get out a hundred percent and anyway so then when i got to college i was not too stressed about i knew that i wanted to be self-employed i knew that i wanted to probably go the direction of working for myself in some capacity and so i was like well i don't care what my gpa is. <laughs> and my mom dropped out like my dad didn't go yeah. to college and my mom made it through i think three semesters and she had like a i don't know it was bad like a point nine gpa say, or something like just one yeah one point two like something crazy it was in low. the neighborhood of the ones yeah and she ended up going back to school when i was a small kiddo and ended up with her finalized gpa being over 3.0 when she graduated which was huge that she pulled it up from there and yeah. she graduated from iowa which is where she had dropped out of and anyway um So I just don't think that it was, I think that that's kind of a theme in my life is my parents were always very open that they didn't necessarily take the most traditional route and that things work out. 
Like yeah. they were both married prior to being married to each other. Dad didn't go to college. Mom dropped out of college. Like it was very apparent to me from a very young age that there are a lot of options and not going down the traditional path does not count you out. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 And I think that ended up putting a lot less pressure on college for me. I never talked to my parents about anything. (laughs) (laughs) I put all of the pressure on myself by myself for the most part. And uh, you had to have learned that somewhere, though. You don't just internalize. Like, I'm not saying, like, I think that that's a bit. Sure. I think, uh, I I mean, again, again, my, my neurodiversity lends itself to rigidity Mm -hmm. and structure. And so I saw rigidity and structure in the college process and was like, cool, I'll do that. And then I also have, uh, pretty severe demand avoidance so i was like well you can't make me do this but i'm gonna try to do it my way and then i almost failed but then i was like i can't ask for help the worst thing i could do is ask for help so i'm gonna have to get better at school and you did i did yeah 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 no i don't know i just i wasn't (sighs) yeah i think i was just competitive i don't know that i loved school or thought I had to do it for somebody. Yeah. I'm competitive. Yeah. Not in school. No. Well, I was never going to win. <laughs> like, that's the thing for me is I'm not competitive where I know I can't compete. Got it. Do Got you know it. what I mean? That's fair. Like, I didn't hold enough interest in sure. it to ever, like, be the best. Yeah. Yeah, you are, you've always been good about knowing what was up your alley like what you were interested I think in I'm and the, the things that you weren't you were like science no thank you i'm like that's great somebody else can be really good at that yeah. <laughs> you're gonna look so good at science compared to me because i'm not gonna do it at all yeah pretty yeah. much it's worked out i don't know for sure okay when you said college stories though prior to getting on this episode what i thought of and the story i wanted to tell and this really doesn't have anything to do with college education wise yeah but it's kind of a fun little embarrassing story that maybe if if you're not in college or you're way out of college, you'll just think it's funny. And if you're going into college, maybe it'll comfort you to know that like things work out. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. You can embarrass yourself. Yeah. Something to know about me. So I didn't start my period until Mother's Day of my senior year of high school. <laughs> so I was 17 years old. <laughs> I had been a competitive athlete. Yep. And so uh, I don't know if that's why. Anyway, it's crazy, but I was old. And so by the time I was going to college, I'd only had like, I don't know, three or four periods ever. Um, And so during, I went through sorority recruitment at the University of Arkansas. And we had to, they provided t-shirts for us. And then you like wear whatever you want on bottom. And this is late summer in arkansas which is hot so everybody's in shorts and stuff and i had this cute pair of white denim shorts that i was wearing with my (laughs) outfit (laughs) if you can see the foreshadowing and we're not allowed to go back to our dorm there are all these rules and restrictions around recruitment and like where you can go and who you can talk to and all this stuff uh and i don't really remember the nitty-gritty of that but i first house that I went to bled all the like started my period bled through my shorts like blood everywhere (laughs) uh and I had to go find like a random leader they call them gamma guys like the group leaders and the girl walked me back to my dorm so I didn't have to be by myself and like help me find clothes like an outfit that like bottom half that worked with my t-shirt for the rest of my parties and all this stuff and it was mortifying yeah and then this is kind of funny is so that girl that walked me back that was the only interaction i had with her during recruitment but she ended up you don't know what sorority organization they're in when they're a gamma chi because the point is for them to be like neutral parties and so after i rushed my sorority i found out that she was an older member of the sorority that i went (laughs) 
And her and I never like had a ton of interactions or anything, but years down the road in like 2018. So what is that? Seven years later, I was at a wedding and she was a guest at the wedding and I was photographing it and we were on the dance floor and I'm taking pictures and I pulled her aside. I said, do you remember that? And she was like, yes, of course I remember. And I I said, isn't that hilarious? And she goes, I don't know. I've never told anyone (laughs) that that happened. And I started busting up laughing. I said, what do you mean you've never told anyone? Like, that's funny. Like, why have you never told anybody that? And she's like, I didn't know if you were embarrassed or not. So I have never told a soul that's really funny. that that happened. That and I was sweet. like, oh, well, you can go tell anybody you want. I'm okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is a natural, like, thing. Yeah. You just uh, were ill-prepared for it. so nice. Yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah. Isn't... But, I mean, you survived the rest of your college career. Yeah. It didn't stick by me. Yeah. Even though you bled through your... Uh, My white shorts during Your white shorts. Yeah. When you were walking around trying to impress people well and you're like i feel like at seven i just turned 18 yeah you're supposed to be uh old enough to like know yeah you know? yeah it's but, not an age you expect somebody to be caught off guard no their menstrual cycle but but I there you was. were there she was you were a rookie you didn't know i was a rookie i still am a rookie yeah i don't know i'm trying to think of uh I think I just had to learn a lot of social skills in college. You changed a lot in college socially, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, that uh, that delayed adolescence hit hard in college. Yeah. I had to learn how to socialize with people a little bit better than I did. So I grew through it. But I don't know that I have any great acute stories. I'm sure I could ask uh, a couple of my friends, and they Ooh. would have some... Uh, I don't know how appropriate stories, but they would definitely have some stories. We have some 21 stories, but they're... Yeah, yeah. Most of my... <laughs> Matt has... I will... I won't lie. Like, I really don't have that many good stories. Like, when our kids get older and they're uh, like, Mom, tell us a story about when you were young and crazy. I don't have very... Like, I don't have any. Yeah. I don't have anything good. I never did... Like, because I never broke rules. I never put myself in situations where I was not in control. I... Which I kind of... Like, I think there's a level of regret for me. Now, granted, I think that if you're going to put yourself in situations where you feel out of control, you need to be with a group of people in which you feel safe. Yeah. And I just don't feel like I had a a entire group setting that I felt that way. Like, I had individual relationships and friends that I very much felt that way with. But but I kind of wish that I would have, like, gone out and, you know... (laughs) I think that's a little bit of my my privilege as a again six two white, white man. man yeah um yeah your your risk for some things is uh significantly lower when you're just physically difficult to you know move or abduct or yeah hurt yeah yeah so, i agree with that okay yeah, i've got some some stories do you have anything else that you want to tell today before we jump into voice messages? I don't know. Yeah, I don't I don't think I have anything good specific wise. Just uh yeah, study hard kids. <laughs> Do your best. All right, we got a couple of voicemails today, so let's get into it. All right. Hi, I am calling in because I just listened to your podcast and one of the callers mentioned that she had just um, lost parents on her side and on her uh, significant other side and they were in uh, military and just got to California and while I can't relate to all of her experiences I wanted to share at least that like I am in California I am a military spouse and I'm also new here and we've also gone through challenges and that you are not alone and I know that you guys obviously do a great job of that but wanted to know that her to know that like within the community that she really isn't alone and other people like listen to you guys and hear things that are in the same situation at times okay that's really nice that's super sweet and i also because you called to say this thank you for calling in i want to say while we have a call like that that my friend from growing up in college is an air force wife and she's stationed in alaska and they have the wives of the armed forces instagram account and they have a facebook group and they have uh 
a website and blog where they have tons of resources and information. Uh, and I think that it's a really good way to connect with people. So yeah. if you're armed forces, uh, anything or a family member that is worth looking into. And that is my friend Jen. Uh, and she's like done some really, really, really incredible things. Um, yeah, just a little bit of community. Wives of the Arms Forces did their Instagram page, and it's Kirsten and Jen. And I actually, I photographed Kirsten's wedding because of meeting Jen, and they're both wonderful, and, like, they are so passionate about letting people know that they are not alone in creating community. So, mm-hmm. just a, a good resource. Hi, Joe. Hi, Matt. Um, I'm calling from Wollongong, Australia, and I just had a couple of things I wanted to say. Firstly... Um, I've been catching up on the last few episodes and I just wanted to say to the girl that's the new preschool teacher that I absolutely get it. I also am a teacher and in my first year of teaching, my husband worked evenings and so I fully understand what she was saying. The best thing that we ever did was that we um, decided that Saturday mornings we would go for brunch every week. It was a non-negotiable and it just gave us that time to connect and all that sort of stuff and it just was so good. We still do it and I've been teaching for six years. Um, The other thing was I just wanted to ask what is the thing that you guys grew up with that you thought was totally normal and then realized that it wasn't? So for example my dad really likes knots and we had a rope tied to the front of the fridge and every time we wanted to get anything from the fridge we had to tie a knot thank you (laughs) that's That's a practical skill it really is Uh, yeah it's not normal at all but life skills right there before we answer that question i want to say i love you guys calling in and having input on things that people have previously said and like the way that you guys are cultivating community for one another outside of just us talking that makes me really happy it's great that people with the experience can answer some of these questions (laughs) yeah for uh, sure and not us all the time for sure (laughs) i'm trying to think do you have anything off the top that you thought was super normal (sighs) i don't know my family dynamic i think there's a lot of things i thought were normal that are not like my family barely talks to each other like we just kind of sit in silence together not that that's like unique but uh i think other families talk to each other more yeah so For sure. Well, and you had, I was going to say that you having church in your home. Yeah. You thought that was normal, right? Yeah. Well, I I knew pretty quickly that it wasn't, not everybody was doing it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. But uh, yeah. Yeah. I did have a non, a non-typical religious upbringing for sure. I'm trying to think of what mine would be. Can you, I'm having a hard time. I know that there are probably loads of them. But I mean, your mom, yeah. for sure. That's definitely not a. I guess that's upbringing. true. Um, yeah, but I I think I knew that wasn't. Yeah. I'm trying to think of things that I like truly thought were looking normal. For, yeah, looking for more trivia type. Bits. I thought having now this was not part of my childhood, but I thought having a passport was normal. Yeah. And I thought that my parents were completely um, shorting me. <laughs> by not getting me one or that taking me anywhere. Neglected. Yeah. Yeah. But I didn't have one. I didn't get a passport till I was in my mid twenties. Yeah. You got a passport when we uh where no, I guess it was you, before that. you got it for I traveled weddings. for work, yeah. Yep. You need to go to Um, what else? I oh, I didn't know that it wasn't uh normal to have your siblings not live with you. Oh yeah. Until I was yeah. older. Like I thought half siblings were, and I know half siblings are not like uncommon, Mm -hmm. but people had such a hard time grasping that my siblings didn't live in the same state as me. Yeah. Yeah. That's one. I kind of want to put a rope on our fridge now though. Just to learn some knots. Yeah. I I mean, it's not a bad idea. I I feel like I could use the ability to tie more knots. Just, you know, it's, it's, it's good. It's good to be able to, you know, hitch a boat or, you know secure something for sure yeah i learned to tie knots as a kid yeah boat life yeah you didn't I get honestly... your period till you were 17 so did that <laughs> did that feel normal to you <laughs> no it didn't because i was a swimmer so i was okay. surrounded by girls talking about cycles got like, it because it okay. very much impacted our sport 
Yeah. And so I was one of the, I was the only one, I think, at that point. I was like ready. Yeah. I was like, what's wrong with me? Yeah. My, the majority of my, uh, my immediate family being on the spectrum, uh, a lot of things weren't typical. We weren't, we weren't doing uh, very neurotypical things in our domicile. Yeah, I'm trying to, like, I, I know that there are things. I'm going to have to think on that. I might come back to that because that's a really, really good question. That yeah. If I thought of a good answer, justice. I would love to come back to it at some point. Okay. We've got one more. One more. Hey, guys. I hope you can hear me well. I always say that people should record in a quiet place, but I was just listening to your podcast whilst... Uh, walking along the seaside and I wanted to say hi and let you know that I love you guys and I really appreciate your honesty, your vulnerability and you probably got that I'm not English or American or whatever but I'll let you guess that one. Um, I really like your uh, points of view and how you discuss with each other even if you don't agree on certain things I really adore the way you communicate the way you parent your children and you know all those kind of things um, I appreciate it and I really enjoy listening to you even though I'm 24 I am neither married nor have a job yet because I haven't graduated I'm studying veterinary medicine uh, my question is and I will send another one soon, is that when you feel really overwhelmed and triggered by everything, like my feet hurt, my mascara doesn't look right, and, you know, just everything's just, bah, what do you do other than meditation? Just try that. It's too overwhelmed to do even that. So love you guys. I love that people from all over listen. Yeah. It makes me really happy that so many people from different, cultures in different places listen every time i'm blown away yes uh when i'm really overwhelmed the number one thing that i do is turn off all electronics around me and i go outside yeah like i feel like giving myself a brisk walk or like a fresh air or a like just kind of letting myself physically regulate and then come back in order to kind of hit the next. And if that's not de-escalating me enough, I call JC, who's my best friend. Um, she she gets a lot of phone calls. Yeah. Even if I'm not talking to her about what I'm struggling with, talking to her and like that's very grounding for me. Mm -hmm. um, what about you? Yeah, I, I think in the same vein, uh, either taking it and doing something like outside that needs to be done, trying to channel some of that aggression uh, into being productive even if you're doing it, you know, semi-violently, go out and do some landscaping, which, uh, yeah, or exercise. I mean, exercise has always been a good one for me to um, try and take out frustration just to get the body moving and uh, engage, engage my mind somewhere that's not whatever's immediately. I feel pressing. like a lot of times when I get overwhelmed, it's by like I'm like oh there's so little time and there's so much to do and it's never going to happen and what 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 do I do what do I do you know I can kind of shut down that way and so when I'm feeling that way like removing myself from that in a way that's productive yeah so like any kind of physical task that's on my to-do list like folding laundry or if exercise is something that I'm wanting to get in that day going on a walk so that something's checked off the list but I'm also not taking on like a stressful or an overly stimulating task yeah we're both angry doers like when we're frustrated with each other yeah. we both have a habit of like if things have really devolved it's like well i'm gonna go really angrily like clean, clean my house. entire closet like out of spite somehow i don't know how but i don't think it's unhealthy though no um, if anything it's productive and so yeah. at the end of it you're like Still kind of pissed off, but look at this closet. Look at what I did. I did that in spite of you. <laughs> I've, I hope that you never say that to me because that would really hurt my feelings. I don't feelings. say it, You know, it's just, it, it's the, it's the inner feeling sometimes. I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying that it's not okay to feel how you're feeling. I'm telling you, please never vocalize <laughs> that to me because it will hurt my feelings. Yeah. 
<laughs> totally fair. Totally fair. It's something you do too, though. Like I've I've seen you like clean the kitchen angrily. And yeah. Like, but but now, uh huh. Matt, if I'm cleaning or picking something up, oh, you I do have a habit. Assume I'm angry, <laughs> which is something that I really don't like about it. Yeah. That's, like um, that's a little bit of black and white thinking for yeah, you. Yeah. Last week, Matt was kind of overwhelmed and had a lot going on, and he was working on getting the upload the podcast uploaded. And yeah. so I went in and I cleaned the entire kitchen. And he had had a drink on the countertop that he hadn't finished. So I took it to him and I like set it down. I was like, here you go. And he, and he like responded angrily to me. And I was like, oh no. What's it's like, I'm going to be done in a second. Yeah. Okay? I was like, wait, no, take your time. I already did all the things that you like needed to do. Like yeah. I, I got, I did it for you. And you were like, yeah, I know you're pissed about that and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, wait, <laughs> I was trying to be nice. <laughs> and yeah. I thought you were going to be like, oh, thank you. I love you. And instead you were. <laughs> and that circles back beautifully to my uh, whole internal uh, negative internal self-talk Yeah. that I've uh, developed. So, Well, our dogs are barking. <laughs> On that note, subscribe. Yeah. Like, do up. all this stuff. We love you guys. We're on Instagram. Our dogs say bye. Yep, bye.